Hi, my name is Ed Coyne, Senior Managing Director of Sprott Asset Management. Sprott is a global asset manager with over $10 billion in assets under management, with an expertise in precious metals and real assets. Due to our recent announcement of the acquisition of the Tocqueville Gold Strategy, I've asked John Hathaway, Senior Portfolio Manager of the Gold Strategy, and Ryan McIntyre, Co-Portfolio Manager of the Gold Strategy, to join me. John, let's start with you. Uh, last year, since 2011, was the first year that gold actually outperformed the S&P 500. Gold was off about 1% and the S&P was off 4%. Uh, this year, through the middle of October, both were up mid to high teens. In your view, what's really changed in the last couple of years? I would say the big thing is monetary policy. Uh, Powell and the rest of the Fed essentially capitulated on any pretense of being tight money, mm -hmm. tightening the uh, interest rate cycle. And in January, Powell had a press conference and said they were not going to um, continue to run off the balance sheet. And that's when gold really started to take off. I think that also helped stocks, uh, just more easy money. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, if I had to single one thing out, it would be uh, a change in the central bank stance in terms of tightening. You know, it's funny, I always hear that often with, when we talk to our investors, actually, they talk about trying to be their own central bank as they're looking at what's going on in the broader market. I, th I think you're right that a lot has changed in that space more recently. Um, you know, Ryan, we spend a lot of time talking about precious metals, particularly physical precious metals. Mm -hmm. But how should an investor be thinking about the market today from an equity point of view? Sure. Well, speaking of changes, I mean, there's been a lot of change at the top of the gold mining sector. Uh, you've had a lot of consolidation at the end of last year, early this year, where you had some of the largest gold mining companies combined. You had Barrick acquiring Rangold, then you had Newmont acquiring Gold Corp. And that's very significant because typically these types of transactions typically occur at inflection points in any market cycle, and in our case, the bear market cycle. So we think we're now coming off the bottom and now hopefully moving into a more constructive environment uh, for gold equities. So it should be very interesting going forward. And the other thing I would highlight, too, in terms of changes and interesting facts is that the price at which the junior companies are trading at now are some of the lowest we've ever seen to the point now where it's actually cheaper uh, for other companies to buy companies who have defined resources mm -hmm. instead of going out and spending their own money, time, and risk to find them. So there's a huge discrepancy there from a value standpoint. Interesting. Well, you know, and, and John, we talk a lot about um, the gold market in general, right, both on the equity side and on the physical side. You know, you've been investing in gold since the late 90s, and you've seen multiple market cycles, obviously, in the gold trade on the physical side. As investors are looking to reallocate back to the space today, you know, how can you frame that allocation? How, what should investors be thinking about as they're looking to put an allocation onto gold and to gold equities? Well, the first thing is that, that gold is a defensive asset, and it actually uh, is a great uh, por portfolio diversifier. Uh, so having some exposure uh, actually protects capital during down periods in the stock market. And I know that hasn't happened to a large extent, but mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one reason that gold is, is so under-owned. But I would say uh, it seems to me that in this world, with super easy money and uh, the rest of the landscape with a very fractious political climate in the U.S., uh, late cycle concerns about a possible recession, all of that, I would think some exposure, at least 5%, would make sense. And then if you're looking, you know, if you have a point of view that's, that's sort of, you want to be more dynamic about that, you could go from 10 to 15 percent, mm -hmm. but that's an individual decision. Right, and a lot of that comes on to, I guess, you know, how they're allocated in the rest of their portfolio. If they're, you know, how much is in traditional stocks, bonds, and so there's forth. There's no single answer. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Ryan, it's interesting. You know, at Sprott, we believe that we're in the early stages of a bull market. When you look statistically, what's gone on in the last really the last decade plus, and really the last two decades. There's a lot of indicators out there that are stating that you know, we are in the early phase of a bull market for gold. When that happens, when gold is flat to rising over a full market cycle, you know, what does that typically mean for gold equities? Why do gold equities traditionally do well in that type of environment? And how should an investor be allocating then to the gold equity space, given that we do think we're in the early stages of a bull market? Well, we're a firm believer in holding both physical gold and gold equities. And the key decision for us when we talk to people is really how much in terms of gold mining equities should you own. And we think investors should treat it like any other sector. 
So to the extent that there is a lot of optimism in the sector, you should probably go underweight the sector. Mm -hmm. But in a situation today that we have where there's extreme pessimism in the gold mining equity sector, my recommendation would be to go overweight the sector in the gold space. And I think to the extent that any investor is picking individual securities like what we're doing, I think our overriding philosophy uh, should be done by investors as well. And that's pick companies that are adding value independent of the gold price. Right. And so those are components adding you know, successful exploration, development, maybe production optimization, but really not be beholden to the gold price itself and really focus on the quality of assets and frankly, the people managing those assets because those are the things that are actually going to deliver uh, high return on capital opportunities. Yeah, and I think that's an important point because so often people think of allocating to gold equities as simply just a levered trade to the price of gold. But to your point, you know, gold companies are companies also, right? Absolutely. And they have management and they have quality and they have balance sheets and you have to pay attention to those things yeah. in order to have long-term success. And clearly, you know, the, the Sprott Tocqueville partnership or acquisition that is set to close in, in January of, of this year, or, or 2020, I think speaks volumes to that quality mindset. We think the same way as you all, so we're excited to have you guys be part of our firm, and we're looking forward to that. So I agree, focusing on quality is really extremely important. Um, John, I know some people sort of cringe at this last question, but we always like to get a forward-looking statement of where we think the world's headed. You know, so this is where you get your crystal ball out and kind of give us you know, your, your predictions. But both from an economic standpoint, just a broader market as a whole, um, and also you know, gold's role in the, in the market, whether it's physical or equity or a combination of the two, what do you think the next couple years are going to look like, and how will that gold allocation potentially benefit investors over that cycle. If you could give us a little thought on that, that'd be helpful. Sure. Um, well, first of all, uh, it's important to note that uh, gold has broken out of a six-year basing pattern. Mm -hmm. And not to sound too much like a technician, uh, rarely does that sort of thing happen and then fizzle out. So it seems clear uh, just from very conventional technical uh, ABCs that gold has a lot more on the upside. Uh, what will drive that uh, remains to be seen. We'll, we'll never know in, at, at, at this stage of the game. But it seems to me that for, uh, when you think about uh, various assets, stocks are at a cycle high, bonds are at a cycle high, but gold isn't. So for gold to go to a cycle high, it would have to exceed its old high of 1900 in U.S. dollars. And I, I've, I would say maybe by 50 percent. Uh, uh, again, I hate giving uh, specific prices sure. uh, connected with a date, so I'm not going to give a date. But I think that's where we're headed, and uh, the reasons are uh, legion. Uh, easy money, uh, uh, geopolitics, uh, shortage uh, of gold relative to demand. Uh, so there, there are many bullish factors that could take us there. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to note that uh, gold's at a high in a lot of currencies already. So you're seeing that, that direction already happen around the world. Right. The definition of a gold bull market is when it's rising in every currency, yeah. and that's what it's doing now. Yeah, so thank you for that. Well, you guys, I appreciate your time and your views on, on, on gold and gold equities. For those that want to learn more about Sprott, we encourage you to visit us at Sprott.com. That's S-P-R-O-T-T dot com. Or you can reach out to our sales and servicing desk at 888-622-1813. And let us advise you on how to allocate to both gold and gold equities. Thank you.